Let's talk about adding data to your project to add context. Let's take a look at this story. This is one of the requ required readings um, for this lesson. The story about a Seattle iron worker who fell um, during construction and survived an eight-story fall. This story has quite a bit of data. Um, the reporter talks about um, using data from the past 20 years from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And so when something like this happens um, in your area and you're doing a story on it, you think, here's this one moment when we're going to cover the, the fall of a construction worker. Now maybe if I've got some time, I'm going to look back and see, you know, what are the numbers on that? Because we know that um, construction accidents are one of the things the government keeps records of. So we see a lot of um, data in this story, and we see even a reference to the death or the fall was on April 30th. And so we've got that timeliness for looking back at what just happened. In this story, um, the other thing we consider is it's not just about um, raw numbers, just throwing a lot of numbers out there, is you really have to think about data in context of um, your community or your population. So in this case, we've got the data, the numbers, and we're talking about per capita. So um, we talk about that whenever we talk about how many you know, traffic accidents there are in a community, and that's per 100 people or something like that. So in this case, we say for every 100 full-time construction workers in the state, roughly six got hurt or sick in 2016 compared to 12 in 2006 and more than 17 in, in 1996. So that gives us a sense of size or um, sort of gauge, a way to gauge those numbers. Um, think about your topic and what numbers or what data might exist. This story out of San Antonio that's sort of a perennial story, the story gets done every year about who are some of the largest water users in a community. When we're talking about a community like Austin or San Antonio, where um, droughts are an issue, water use is an important um, public topic. So it's possible to get um, specifics, to get data on how many gallons are used and which um, addresses actually use the most water. So does data exist for your topic? Where might you find it? Um, and what kind of data um, are you thinking about might be the most um, specific for your project? So start looking now. That's going to be very important, and I am happy to help with that because there are just a zillion places to look for data. Um, there's a number of places online that you may be able to find pertinent information. So data.gov is actually a U.S. government site set up for federal government data in all manner of things. So everything from agriculture and climate to education to public safety, there's just um, many, many places to look for data here. If um, you're interested in something on higher education, the Department of Education, the U.S. Department of Education, actually has the college scorecard, which takes data from a number of different sources and puts it into a form that you can then use to search in a rather effective way um, to find out about any number of things from, um, let's say you want to find out how many colleges are in a certain size town or how many degrees are offered someplace. So many different ways you can search this data. Um, and state level, the same sort of thing exists. Oftentimes in Texas, specifically, there is a law that requires um, governmental offices to have what they call high value data sets available to the public. And if you think about it, it makes more sense for the government to op offer this data online so that they don't have to constantly be answering open records requests for numbers that um, people want, all, all sorts of people want. So you can look at a number of different um, federal, I mean state offices, and you'll be able to find data there as well. Um, a number of cities have a similar system. So usually it's larger cities like Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, um, where they've got open government data portals as well. So you can um, just search for a specific city if you're looking for something like that. But Austin has a very good data portal. Um, smaller cities like San Marcos often don't have quite the sophisticated system um, in their local government. But almost every city has some data online. It's sometimes hard to find. So in San Marcos, for example, if you're looking for information on apartment complexes, it's a little hard to find, but they actually have this report called the multifamily report where they have, it's a PDF you download, 
Um, so this is the June of 19, and it goes back to 2012 and tells you all of the apartment complexes that have been approved um, or are currently under construction or are under consideration. And then it's got this handy um, total line down here where you'll see in the past eight years, um, more than 5,000 apartment units um, have been constructed or under, under consideration in San Marcos. Um, the same sort of thing exists for agencies. So the Center for Disease Control, which is a federal agency, but um, you might be able to find health data there. What I would say is sometimes um, Googling it really is the simplest way to start. Um, but then when you get a better sense of what you're looking for, you definitely want to look for data that's reliable and that you know has a history of um, providing context. So something that you can look at over years. Texas State, like a lot of public universities, also publishes data. And so the Office of Institutional Research at Texas State is responsible for keeping all manner of data on students and faculty and all, all the sorts of things at Texas State. So you can go to the Office of Institutional Research and you can look at things like student enrollment, student demographics, admission, retention, graduation, all sorts of things. And there are some very handy visuals um, that come with that. So you can look at university enroller and it tells you where the students are from, all um, sorts of demographic information. Another um, interesting source is Google public data. So this is a Google service, but it really brings together all of this public data from around the world. So just as you could go specifically to data.gov or the Census Bureau, um, Google pulls all of that into a search where you can look for specific data. And so you can create your own data set, you can pull from these public data sets, and it also allows you to do some visualization, which can be interesting. Um, that's where we are for this week. Be sure that you look for data that... You'll also see that... Um, You might just try using Google Public Data to, to uh, put in a search for something you're looking for and just see if it's in there. Um, otherwise, we will continue to look at other resources um, and some library resources for connecting with data.